So today I'll be talking about onboarding as a process, the health effect of onboarding that helps the ecosystem to Now, before we start, I would like to give the, the, the definition of what an onboarding process is. According to the dictionary, the Oxford Dictionary describes onboarding as a, an action or process of integrating new contributors or new employees. Here I use a new contributors in place of the new employee to an organization. This aim at forming them, giving them the culture, the strategy, the tools, how they can be helpful to contribute to this company. I actually cut out this one action here purposefully because onboarding, as we will see, it is a process and not an event or an action. In time past, many organizations use it as uh, an action or an event, and we will see it. Now, in this talk, I'm using OpenStack ecosystem as a case study to understand this health factor on uh, attracting new, cost of, uh, new uh, contributors. Why OpenStack? OpenStack is built on four open principles. Of recent, they added five, but I will base on the four, four ones that are very common and well known. Open source, open design, open development, and open uh, community. This open source, uh, open stack institute, open stack foundation created an institute that is specialized in handling the onboarding process. And because of that, we will see the importance of uh, this. These are just excerpts from people who were motivated, individuals who were motivated to come to a training. Look, for example, the quote beneath. It says, if you go to, the, to an issue tracker and things seem confusing, it is not just you. These tools <coughs> require a lot of impact, implicit knowledge, and things like that. This other person says, if you are a new open source contributor, the process can be intimidating. If we look into all this, then we will know the importance of why onboarding is critical for an ecosystem. The aim of this uh, work is to investigate this phenomenon of onboarding as, an, as a process and an experience. And we want to know if it has benefiting effect to an ecosystem. To do that, we would like to study the metrics that have been defined already. For example, the cross-community collaboration, growth and maturity, which is like survival and diversity and inclusion. Moreover, we ask one fundamental question throughout this uh, process. Does onboarding experience improve the health of an ecosystem? To answer our question, we did an observational study, both qualitative and quantitative. The first part was to observe new members, new contributors, how they are going through the process of being on board. And after that, we will analyze that data, mine the data, and uh, to, to make more findings. So the qualitative aspect is actually the aspect of observation. Observation is a form of quali qualitative study. As I mentioned in the previous slide, I played the role of the horses as is well known by Erwin Goffman, whereby you use the method of you, the observer, and you become like a slave, and the people you are observing are your master. You don't interfere so much in their work. Now, the, the process of onboarding, the first, it, it, it happens in OpenStack in such a way that since OpenStack has two major releases every year, of the, like they release new versions of OpenStack every twice a year, and before this date of release, they organize an event like OpenStack Summit. Then the institute to recruit new members happens to coexist with this event. So they have a two days training to welcome new members. And it is during this two day training that the major onboarding process takes place. When new members who are motivated, self-motivated, they come, they, they, they follow process like creating new accounts, setting their work uh, environment, getting used to with the working culture, and at the end they set up a system, like a real system, like a real working environment, where they actually contribute to the code base. Furthermore, we'll see how much uh, of this contribution is diverse and how 
He brings because people from different walks of life, orientations of every way, sexual orientation, every way are welcome and they collaborate so well. Now, this environment is actually created to replicate the real system that they will be working on. As we will see, when we gather this information from the new participant, for example, I'll just give one thing, like if we see the, this uh, image here, the dev stack, I just want to highlight here that this is a, a kind of all-in-one open stack environment, which has been set up so that people could have the feel of the entire ecosystem project. They actually work on that system from the, uh, like submitting uh, a new feature or, for example, bug tracking because these are new members. We are not talking about uh, making new features now. They actually do it right up to the point where it is reviewed and either rejected so that they understand the process when your work is being rejected, what you do more, the iteration goes on to the moment they, they, they accept it for the trial version, not on the main uh, branch. When this thing goes on, we capture the, like the new uh, participants. For example, onboarding was introduced in OpenStack in 2014. Prior to that, we wanted to know how the experience or the, how contributions or contributors behave to see the activities in order to understand the, the benefit what, at what point or why this onboarding was introduced. <coughs> But that still will not tell us a better picture or give us a better picture. So we put a, 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 a baseline here to say, okay, between 2000 and OpenStack, by the way, was created in 2010 for those who may have forgotten. But we gave like one year period where the, 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 the source code could have at least built up to something. We started from 2011. We mined the repository for new people who started contributing from that time. Those without onboarding training. We take three years from here, from 2010, 2011, and 2012. We capture, and 13, we capture three years from here, three years from here, three years from here, and so forth and so forth. So far. Each case, we follow individuals from that period of time to see up to the moment that they started getting engaged, like uh, make, uh, fixing bugs, committing new features, and all the activities within the ecosystem. Now we want to compare it with those who actually underwent the onboarding process. But then, the big catch here will be to compare this category one with category two here. Because at this time, 2014, onboarding was actually introduced. But it, it, there are people who joined OpenStack to contribute here. They never went through the onboarding for, their, for whatever reason, or they choose not to, and they are still contributing. So we want to compare these two people. But for this studies here, the, we are still mining this data, so I'll be showing more of the result of category mm -hmm. one and three because it was available at this, at this time. We are still working on it. Now, we have metrics like the commit, the bug fix, the blueprints, effort, and the patch set that we are using, like the metrics to, to carry out this quantitative analysis here for each member or each contributor. To, to answer the research question, we had to group all these metrics into this common uh, ecosystem metrics like diversity and inclusion. Here, we are not only limiting to, to gender, but we are also looking at the code base. I want to emphasize on the code base just for informative sake. In OpenStack, source code is treated the same way like documentation. So people who contribute through documentation have the same status with people who contribute through, through source code. This is another form of diversity and inclusion. Because sometimes programmers think, okay, because they are not writing the code, they, they may look themselves too superior than people who are contributing. Because all of them have the same working environment. But for this study, we will focus more on, people, on the source code, not because we want to discriminate, no, just for information's sake. The cross-community collaboration, we took like the commits, the patch sets, and things like that to measure it per participant. Then finally, we'll look at the growth and maturity, how they survive over time. To do that, we, after analyzing all this uh, information, we have this representation from the uh, initial findings from the participants, we see their diversity, their, their dispersion, where they are coming from, and all those things. We try to categorize it. And just to understand here, 
We have three categories here for the male, female, and neutral. I respect this category because a lot of people said different things to, like different words or different naming, but they were referring to the same thing. So to, to bring one common name that truly represents this community, I just use the word neutral for respect purpose. So we could see here that before the onboarding uh, started, I, I'm, I will apologize if the right the text are very small, but to my left, to your left here, is the onboarding ex the experience before the contributors before the onboarding was introduced and to your, uh, on the other side is when the results after onboarding. So we could see the proportion of male, female, and those who consider themselves in other categories are neutral but in both categories. So the red are uh, female, the blue is male, then the pink is the neutral category. So is that that people didn't want to, to provide that gender or is No, they provided diff I said they used different different acronyms. Meaning the showing the same thing. Non binary. Non binary. Mm -hmm. Other. Yeah, mm -hmm. something like that. Not so it was which is quite quite a lot to <laughs> present non binary people. Well, it could be other, I don't want to say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people want to say. Okay. So, furthermore, we try also to look on the first day that mm. as mm. they started the onboarding, like in OpenStack, they actually have to work and mentor you up to the point where you make your first commit. That is when onboarding ends. Because at that point, you become mature. You understand the process. So we look at the set, of the, uh, you see the proportion here is, here is like for the female contributors before onboarding experience, female contributor after the onboarding experience. I took seven projects as we, seven releases, sorry. Since we have uh, six months release cycles, we, we, we took like, this is the, uh, the first release that we studied, the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seven release before onboarding. And we did the same after onboarding, at least to have a baseline to compare. And then we look now the females here, the proportion that they were introduced. That now this is the male proportion for the same metrics. We have those for the neutral. Try to compare to see uh, before and after the onboarding experience. Furthermore, we also look the effort where we try to use the, the patch set and the approved commit to see like how these uh, three groups were still doing. So to my, uh, to this section here on the left, the right, you have the effort made by female contributors pre-onboarding and to, to the other section is still the same after onboarding. So, sorry again, so that, what, what effort? Yeah. Like, uh, that's what I said, we just compute like the the commit, the approved commit over the patch set, you know, sometimes you submit, the, it, like you submit a, a work, it has to go through certain iterations uh -huh. before it, it is, uh, so we want to look that effort. Okay, well, let, let me It's just the metrics we define. What's one unit of effort? Mm -hmm. It's just like asking the same question like, uh, what's a unit of commit? Hey, but, but, but what did you mean? That's your definition, I'm just asking what your definition Yeah, that's what I'm saying, we, we divide like the commit, and to the over the patch set. So the unit is the time it took to uh, the other way around. You divide the, the number of, of attempts to yeah. commit divided by the actual commit over a Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so one is open. Okay. Okay, okay thank you, man. So we did the same for both for the, all the three categories, and we had different results, which shows which shows that actually there is a difference. Then, like to see, like here, the time that the the, the participants were introduced through onboarding or they they sign up, how do we know that period of time? For example, in OpenStack, before you contribute, you have to create your profile, and you cannot submit patch without having accounts, let's say on GetRid, on the foundation website where they link you to track your activity. So that information, we really see the date, the time that the, the, their system was set up or they, were, they, they got engaged for those who did not go through the onboarding. For those on onboarding, the day that they actually 
uh, the onboarding because they, are, they have been walked through a process throughout submitting to, uh, on the dev stack branch. So from that moment that we start counting the, the year is the number, I put it in the, the time in days. So we see how long it took and they survived like to submit their first, uh, let's say, bug fix or... And what what's, the, what's the start date then? The start date is the, from the moment they gave the onboarding training. No, the, no, the, the, this the, the, these people before, the time that they signed up to create their accounts at Gary, uh -huh. at the foundation, that's the became mm -hmm. member. We capture that time. We start monitoring how long it takes them. So we see that with those who underwent through <coughs> onboarding, they took a shorter time to make their first uh, either contribution. Unlike those who did not go through onboarding, they still have contributions, but they took a longer time. Ah, so is that a, a Cox proportion of hazards model? No, this is the, the survival curve. We did this survival analysis. So analysis, okay. And so the, the left one is, um, well, the arguably is statistically with... insignificant. The right one is significant. Do we have confidence right. intervals? Yeah, uh, anyway, like for example, if you see the insignificance comes between the, the three groups. Again, uh, can, can you estimate how large the, the confidence intervals are? Like in 95%? Uh, yes. Yeah. So the p-value was like 0.05. Yeah, but what's the, that's the region uh, where reasonable... Oh, okay, yeah. I do, not put, I, do not, I do not put it here visually to see because mm -hmm. it will make the, the graph so crowded. Because that would be interesting to see if there yes, is actually... Yes, but I, have it, I actually so have it. But I guess because the lines are so close to each yeah, other, there is no the difference between the three groups if you just look to the left one. No, I, I didn't yeah. mean the difference between He's the three groups, but the difference yes. between uh, before and after. Yeah. That's but for what was the purpose here to compare whether there is a difference between male and female, or to compare whether there is a difference between, between before and after onboarding? It's before and after, but since we are still working with these three groups. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So in both cases, or in both cases, we try to see the, the proportion of females and mm -hmm. on the, on the, on the genders differences and how they survived. To make okay. in this case, so the first group is before 2014, yes. right? and the other is after. after. So there might be another potential issue that uh, the reason why you see a difference is maybe not because of onboarding, but because some other change has been going on in OpenStack that might also have an effect on, uh, mm -hmm. on the observed difference. Yeah, so th that's why we have not yet concluded because the work is still like ongoing. So we are just reporting like yeah. the findings yeah. up, up yeah. to this point. So with this now, as I said earlier, the work is ongoing. And the, the, the main work that we want to do, like the benchmark or the baseline for our work is to compare it with the other category that onboarding existed, but they did not go. That would really be the... The, where the, the difference will come out clear. So in sum, we introduce, introduce the concept of the process of onboarding. We show how new members got into the system and they are groomed to start contributing to the ecosystem. We did an observational study and, quali and, quantitative, uh, and quantitative analysis on the data based on the health metrics. And we now realize that in OpenStack, they have like uh, the gender is well represented we respect this gender uh, diversity and inclusion. We, we try to look the survival analysis to see how people mature, like growth and maturity. And as I said, the work is still ongoing. So we look forward now, let's say, to the future work, where we'll actually, okay. so like as I said, we'll try to compare now with the second category, which are the, the people now, in order to conclude our findings. So at this moment, at this moment we are not making any declaration, they say, but we are just saying this is the result of what we have gotten so far. And that's the presentation.